called. Here's something even stranger. The entire nation of the Republic of the Maldives, often just called the Maldives, is so flat that its average elevation above sea level is one and a half meters. That's five feet. In fact, its highest point anywhere on any of the islands is 2.3 meters. That's seven and a half feet. And it's in the midst of the Indian Ocean, south of India. The Maldives consist of 1,192 separate islands, and they're distributed among a north-south double chain of 26 separate ring-like coral atolls. Um, they're distributed over a total area of 90,000 square kilometers. So you can see it's a very unusual looking country. Each one of these small rings is a separate coral atoll. And what's more, if you zoom in on any one of these, you can see how remarkably flat this is. More than 80% of the land here is less than a meter above sea level. This area is a tropical paradise. I mean, the climate never varies outside of about 75 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. In fact, the southern part of the islands is actually right at the equator. Currently, tourism is its number one industry, and there's a large number of beautiful resorts. But interestingly, it actually used to have a very different industry. It used to make money. Well, not so much make it as harvest it. In fact, people would come here from all over the world, India, Africa, China, to get money. Um, I happen to have some loose change here in my pocket. Um, it's not coins, it's shells. The major industry here was the collection of cowrie shells, which were used as a form of money. N not just any cowrie shells, but a particular species called Monetaria moneta. It's found throughout the Indian Ocean and also parts of the Pacific, but it was especially abundant here in the Maldives. So much so, in fact, that from the second century onward, many parts of the Arabic world knew of the Maldives as the Money Islands that the Chinese started using cowrie shells as currency back as far as 3,000 years ago. And there are parts of Africa that continued using them up through the late 1800s. The Maldives today currently have a fairly small population. There are only about 400,000 people who live there. That's about the size of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the local people there primarily live on about 300 of the over 1,000 islands. Um, but they don't mingle with tourists who go to other islands um, for uh, vacation. They're, it's actually a very strict Islamic country, one of the few that does not practice religious tolerance. Now, um, if you look at some of the islands here, they are spectacular. You can go here on vacation. There are a lot of tours that will take you to some spectacular beach resorts. In fact, you can sometimes have your own island, but don't expect to see any of the local people here because they don't go to the islands that you will go to. Now, the government's actually very modern in some ways. Uh, in fact, it's the first government to open up a virtual embassy within a second life. It's a, an online virtual world where you can go and hear lectures or go to conferences or even have classes. The capital, Malé, is actually a very cosmopolitan place. You can see there's not a lot of room for horizontal expansion, so they build up here. And it is quite a remarkable thing to come across this, this busy, bustling metropolis with absolutely nothing else around it. It was the first country to hold a government cabinet meeting underwater. This actually wasn't a tourist gimmick. The government was making a statement about the importance of controlling greenhouse gas emissions in order to combat global warming. I mean, obviously, if sea levels continue to rise, this would not be a good thing for a country where more than 80% of the land is less than a meter above sea level. Um, as it is, being at such a low elevation in the middle of the ocean creates some significant hazards. Uh, during some of the large Indian typhoons, um, uh, cities like Malé undergo significant flooding and severe damage. Well, how can it be that nearly the entire country is right at sea level? I mean, if you look, it's just remarkably flat for huge expanses. It can't possibly be a coincidence after all, because the sea level just rose 400 feet at the end of the last ice age. We've seen this in several of the previous lectures. So how does this work? I mean, 
Had all of these islands been sitting at 400 feet above sea level just 20,000 years ago so that the sea level came right up to their level? No, of course not. The islands back then were still right at sea level, only they were 400 feet lower. So how does this happen? Well, you would never imagine it, but all of the islands of this nation are volcanoes, just very ancient volcanoes. Now, these volcanoes didn't look the way they do now when they formed. When they formed, they look like any other volcanic ocean island, like Hawaii, you know, tall with lava initially and then steep cliffs. But there's a progression that happens as you go from a volcano like Hawaii to a coral atoll like the Maldives. They are part of a single progression. Initially, you have a volcano, and we've seen the eruptions that happen. And over time, though, when the volcanism stops, these islands will begin to sink down. Barrier reef of coral, however, will stay at sea level while the volcanoes have long since been torn away and actually sunk under the surface of the waves. There are a couple things that are involved here. There are three factors. First of all, there's the erosion of the islands that happen. And then there's a sea level rise that's climate related. And then there's a process that involves actually the sinking of the ocean 